Well, it's kind of a little follow up to the Truxa Cup. You can see it's coming. Um, spoon gouges when I get it down to where I want it. A um, couple of different sizes, that's my bigger one. When I get as the bowl or the cup gets bigger, I like to switch over to the bigger gouges. You can kind of see the difference. There's a few different sizes. This is good for starting, but you know, as you get further and further along, you can use a bigger gouge. And uh, a good rule of thumb, uh, my friend Brian taught me this, never have any more blade exposed than you want in you. So in other words, don't hold it like this. That means you've got, potentially, to hold, choke up on it, you know, just because that's realistically all the blade you need. You just kind of take a little bit at a time. And I mean a little bit at a time. And again, he said it best, you know, you think of a beaver, I mean, they do this for a living. They cut trees down and all they have for a tooth is that. And, uh, you know, they, you can see the, what a beaver can do in 24 hours. But bottom line is they're doing a little bit at a time. If you ever go around a tree that's been cut down by a beaver and you look at the chips, this is what you see. They just chip and chip and chip. And uh, you're kind of thinking thinking of it like that. You just take a little bit of the time. And uh, eventually you get down there. But that's actually about this. I get it down to the right size. Now what I'm trying to do is I want to finish off. And then I've done a lot with my spoon knife. This is a mortar spoon knife. You know, so I can... I just don't want to cut any more into that, but, you know, you can use that for your rough shaping. But again, I've, I've pretty much cut that down, so right now I'm working on the outside edge. So I want a thin rim on this thing. What I do is just take a little bit of the time, a little bit of the time, and uh, flatten it out again no rush because if you take you can always take more off you can't put more back on so if you take too much wood you know eventually now this is also going to be sanded when I'm all said and done but this I'll actually finish off a steel wool take some really fine steel wool and because I want that to be as natural <laughs> I, <laughs> I forgot who it was but <laughs> you know who you are uh, I want this to look as natural as possible, um, you know, the natural green. I'm going to lose it here in a minute. Uh, but, you know, like I said, that's about the right size. This is going to fit my hand perfectly, and then I can drink out of it. And ultimately, I'm going to have two holes here with uh, some leather tied in, and it's going to wear on my belt like that. But, you know, we're still in the beginning, rough rough stages, so I'm still trying to get the roughness off before I sand it. But, as you can see, it's a work in progress. And then you also got to bear in mind where your grain is. In other words, you don't want to ruin your grain. Chop, you want to work with it um, so you can see the grain. What I've got here, it's hard to see on this camera, but there's little grains that are just like this. Now, I don't want to take that away. I want to. I want that. I want to see that. So I want to be careful not to gouge. And I want a nice, smooth finish. So anyway, I'm working. I do want to take a little bit more. I just saw it. Yeah, like this. I've got a little high spot inside, so I'm going to gouge a little bit more.
see, that's all I took out of there. The better you get it, the quicker you are when you first started. It seems like you'll never get finished, but... Kind of a cool grain. I don't know if you can see the inside of that, but I just think it's worn in. It's going to have a really nice look to it. I'll get it down to about where I want it because it's got a nice thin wall all the way around. All the way around. And I've gotten this back to where I want it. So this is actually cut back in here. Ah, warm that coffee up. I like to keep leather in my lap, um, basically so I don't cut through my tin pants or my wool jacket or whatever I'm wearing, or myself. And I like to keep that, that'll, you know, that'll stop a blade. Um, uh, that's why I like to have it, just for you know. It's got a really cool, cool grain. Comes like this. It's just like that. Awesome. Good old rock maker. It earns his name though. Very tired of the rock. Kind of following with the green, so we'll sit and do it. Now again, I am going to sand this, but the better you get it, this stuff doesn't sand easy at all. Um, you know, the, the um, closer you can get it. And something else, what I do when I carve these, I, um, well, when you carve these or whoever carves them, um, we like the sap running right out of it. I mean, the, the wetter the better. And the reason being, it's so much easier. It's, it's hard enough to carve as it is. This thing was dry. I mean, so what I do is I'll start a project, you know, pound the bark off it, start a project, and I put it in a Ziploc bag, and then I keep it cool, as cool as possible. And that keeps it wet from drying out. And after you get this thing roughed and pretty much ready for sandpaper, then what you want to do is set it aside for a few days, let it dry out, and then hit it with sandpaper because if it's wet, it's just going to gum the sandpaper up. 
So when you're sanding, the drier the better. When you're carving, you want it literally. I mean, cut that thing off the tree and start carving that day. That's the that's the easiest way to do it. Um, you know, I'm not a professional, obviously, wood carver, but. Just a tip to make it easier for you. Anyway, we'll get back here on this project.